I made it to clinical day three for me. Um, the shift is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. all day, 12 hour shift. This is my first week here and I got two more weeks left here and then I go to my next hospital. I'll try to show you guys a little bit when I get closer. Um, try to share as much as I can today. Hey guys, I am on my way to clinicals. Yay! So excited. I did have a soda. I had a Dr. Pepper. It didn't really work very much. So, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I want to go home. And let's see. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of what I did today. So, today I was in ICU. I was in two different floors. Second floor and third floor. And I got to see an extubation and the lady was getting better. So that was awesome. All the extubations that I've done in the past, they were all deaths. But this is the first extubation that I got to see. My classmate, she extubated while the RT was telling her what to do. The patient got better, so they were able to be extubated, which is awesome. And we had a few BiPAP setups um, we had to do. And we had uh, vent, vent checks. We had one vent initiation that was a transport patient. So we had to put him on our vent. So we did that. Or we had to transport him to the CT. So we had to take him off his vent and then put him on the transport vent. ventilator nebulizer treatments um, today was the first time that I did Brovana and Yepper till or something like that um, that was the first time I've ever used those drugs before or uh, given those drugs and then she also taught me charting which was awesome because when I was in the ER last week he did not teach me any charting so that was really sucky so today she taught me charting and she um, taught me how to do the um, the transport and how to transfer them over to the transport vent. She taught me about a little bit about BiPAP and then a little about pressure control. So we, she was trying to get the patient onto volume control because her pressures were really high. Her tidal volumes were really low. So she, she's new, she's been working for two years and um, she wanted to switch them over to volume control to see if her pressures would go down and if her volumes would, would go up. But when she switched her over to volume control, it did not work. She had to switch her back to pressure control and um, she was just trying to manipulate the, the Draeger, the V500, um, to see if the patient would get better tidal volumes but sadly she did not and then I did um, 
ET sectioning as well. They let me do some ET sectioning, which was good, I think one or two times. Two patients she let me do. And, oh, we did an EKG. We did it together. We hooked up the patient to the EKG machine, and then she put in all the patient information and printed it out. She showed me where all of the oxygen rooms are and the med rooms and where the respiratory um, equipment are in the um, in level two or in what is it in floor on floor two where all the respiratory equipment is so she taught she showed me around she gave me a little tour and she showed me what where, where all the equipment was Oh, she showed me the chest x-rays of the patient so I was able to look at the chest x-rays and I was able to interpret them pretty well like when there's fluid I'm able to um, tell when there's fluid in the lungs so that's really exciting that I'm learning that and um, twice I guessed the diagnosis like I said do they have CHF and she said I don't know let me check so she checked the chart and the patient did have CHF so twice that happened and I got it right so that's very very good I'm proud of myself I'm learning a lot she told me can you go get an OPA oral pharyngeal um, because this patient bites on the ET tube so we have to have a bite block in there so the OPA is like a bite block pretty much and so she had me go to the RT department to go get a size um, size 8 and a size 10 because she had got a size 11 and it was too big so she put it in the mouth all kinds of fluid started coming out so then she said oh can you give me hook up the suction and give me hand me over the oral suction so I gave her that and then um, so I went down to the RT department and I was able to get the size 8 and 10 she used the size 10 and that one was perfect for the patient and that patient's going on comfort care today and the son was there and asking questions and he said oh are you a student and I'm like yeah and he's like oh, okay I think we had a total of like six patients six intubated patients people honking like crazy and I hear an ambulance but I don't know where they're coming from let's see are they turning this way they might be turning this way they are turning this way okay I gotta get on the side here just gotta get on the side there is a firefighter coming through I heard some honking I was like who is that you might be able to see the lights now. There he goes. So, and yeah, that's a little update on what I was able to do today. And I am going to try to give little updates. Um, a YouTuber, she goes to clinicals and then she gives a little update on what she was able to do. So I got this idea from her. So thank you. I'll have to give her a little shout out. I'll put her name down here. And um, there's another one coming. Another. No, this one's the ambulance. These are the paramedics coming through now. I don't know why I have my signal light on. I passed my mom's house. But I'll talk to you guys later. I am here um, in the parking lot. It's Monday. And I'm going to try to take you guys in with me. Try to show you guys a little bit more today. Um... If I have time and if I have a chance and yeah it is currently 550 so let's go Good morning. I made it to clinicals today. I got my jacket on today. I yesterday I just had my shirt on that said my scrub top that said SJVC. This one has my lungs on there. So, and I'm doing putting my hair up in a ponytail 
and it is 5.45. So I'm gonna start walking in to the hospital right now. Um, and I don't know where they're gonna put me. They might put me back in ICU again today or they might put me in CV ICU or they might put me in ER, but they might keep me in the same place as well. And I hope I have a good experience and a good RT today to teach me. I did not eat breakfast today, but I did make my coffee and I did not do my lashes or my makeup. Um, but I do have my mocha coffee in here. And I do have my water. So I'm door dashing today unless they let me leave. And then I will be um, getting some food. Let's go. Hey guys, so what's up? It's Thursday today and school is out. School is over for today and I'm home now. And I just wanted to kind of go over a little bit of my clinicals and some things that I wanted to share. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I know I shared this clipboard in my clinical supplies video so this is just basically a clipboard a respiratory therapy clipboard and it has oxygen systems on there it has normal avg values spirometry lung volumes and capacities normal spirometry it has patterns or flow volume curve showing ventilatory abnormalities, obstructive, severe obstructive, restrictive. It has obstructive and restrictive patterns, classifications of severity of airflow limitation in COPD, weaning protocols, spontaneous SBT trials, termination criteria. Sorry. So I carry this, it's a clipboard. And I put this in my pocket, my pant pocket. And I carry this with me to clinicals, to every single patient room. I carry this with me. And I have my DARS in there. So these are my DARS. My DARS are basically daily assessment report. And it has my name, it has the facility, the week, the date, the time. And then on this side, it has all of the skills that I need to be checked off at the end of the semester. So for the skills that I need to be checked off for this semester, fourth semester is adult vent monitoring, cuff pressure, extubation, NIPPV slash CPAP slash BiPAP, ventilator initiation, weaning parameters, ABG draw, that was the same as last semester, airway clearance, same as last semester, bronchoscopy assist, CPR, DPI, equipment troubleshooting, humidity blend aerosol, hyperinflation therapy, intubation assist, MDI respimat, patient instruction, patient education, procedure documentation, 
tracheal section and then it gives you a little spot for other right right there um it asks for doctor interaction and you circle yes or you put no if there was no doctor interaction and then your dce will initial and and then they'll write the total hours and then you have any notes from your dce and then on this side you have your clinical instructor name and they sign in date and then you also have your respiratory therapist um preceptor they print their name and then they sign their name right here so this is what we get when we go to clinicals for this term the ones from last term had some of these things but not everything so they did look a little different so i carry these in my clipboard and then something that was different from this facility compared to another facility that i was at was these forms so they had this form available and it basically has heart rate respiratory rate saturation breath sounds room number name oxygen time and meds so these are very very helpful i really like these and then they have these for your vent checks so basically it has all of your settings right here the only thing i didn't like about this it doesn't give you the settings for the, what the patient is doing so that so it says exhale, exhale tidal volume, spontaneous tidal volume, exhaled minute ventilation. So I'm assuming it really depends on the mode that you are on in order to input these numbers. And then it gives you a section for the alarms and a section for shift summary. So it has breath sounds, sputum amount, sputum color, sputum consistency, and then the tube moved right, middle, left, and the tube is at and then you could put 22 at the teeth or 24 at the gum whatever it is and then treatment the time and the meds and then blood gases the date the time the ph and the co2 it doesn't have an option for the bicarb i thought that was very helpful so you don't have to write every single thing down so i also have a report sheet and it does have names on here so i'm just going to kind of let you see real quickly i covered the names um but basically it has room number patient name diagnosis patient number i don't know what that means uh order when it is when it's due how is it administered and the et tube size so it says count but i don't know what that means also have a respiratory report sheet and i don't want to show you the name so i'm just going to show it really quickly so each little square here the patient name the room number the diagnosis and then on the left side it says vent and then you put abg time ph co2 bicarb and then it says x-ray breath sounds reason for current therapy sbt done yes or no pass or fail rsbi reason sbt not done and then <clears throat> on top it says bipap and then on the right it says sputum settings tube placement neuro and then history and then below that it says notes so it does give you the option to put in your own notes and I found out that AKI abbreviated means acute kidney in injury. And there was another. So CKD means chronic kidney disease. So I did ask about that one. I asked about both of those because that was on the patient's little, the report for the diagnosis so now let's go with what i was able to do on tuesday of last week i did write a lot of notes where are they at see all those notes first of all we have this patient they came in for afib so atrial fibrillation um, they were on high flow nasal cannula 
Then we had a second patient, which was postcode, came in for postcode. He was on a ventilator, so we had to do ventilator checks. He's on a Draeger V500, so we had vent checks on him. Um, he was on Q6 Proventol and Atrovent. And he was on a BID of 0.5 Pomacort. So the RT asked the doctor if we could discontinue the BID and just continue the Q6. So he said yes, that was fine. So we had a third patient that was an asthma exacerbation, brought into the ER for asthma exacerbation. He was on a vent, Draeger V500. His last uh, ABG was metabolic acidosis. They were on a Q6 atrovent, atrovent. So this patient was Q6 atrovent, Q2 proventol, 10 milligrams, and that was it. And I got to extubate her all by myself. My RT preceptor was so amazing. She said, we're going to ask the family to step out. But first of all, she said, do you know how to extubate? Have you, have you ever seen? Have you ever done it? I was like, yep, I have done extubation. I've have, I have assisted and I've done it. And so she said, okay, I'm going to let you do it all by yourself. And I was like, okay, yay. I was so happy. So yeah, she told the family to leave or the nurse did and then we went in the nurse was already in there two nurses were in there I think one nurse was training the other nurse and so she basically the RT preceptor basically told me um I'm gonna have you pull out the NG tube and there was an oral tube and the ET tube and I had to pull it all out so I had to pull it all out all by myself and sorry about this so basically I got to extubate all by myself and that was amazing and I had a wonderful, wonderful experience. And she was like, you did a great job. And I was like, yay, thank you. And yeah, that was my first time extubating a patient and that patient was going on comfort care because their family just did not want them to be intubated any longer. And so then we had another patient with AKI, acute kidney injury, and that one had Q4 PRN Proventol, so we never got to see that patient because they didn't need it. And then we had another patient with IC bleed, intracranial bleed. That one was on a ventilator, Draeger V500, and they were on Q4's Proventol. So this was my first time use, uh, giving Proventol, giving Brovana, and giving, no, I have given Atrovent. Atrovent. So our sixth patient had COPD, and they were also on a Draeger V500, and they were BID, Brovana, and Q2 Proventol in Atrovent, but I think we ended up giving them the Brovana and the Atrovent and the Proventol all together. It was in line through the Draeger. Our seventh patient had CKD, which is chronic kidney disease, and that one was on a Draeger V500, and... We, they just had um, ventilator checks. Our eighth patient was a COVID patient and a fall patient. She fell and she had a big knot on her head and it was bloody and it's basically called a subdural hematoma. So yeah, she had a lot of bruises all over her face, both of her eyes, black and blue eyes. And it was just very, very sad. Uh, the thing that was weird was that they did not have us wear N95s going in there, but they had us wear, I guess they're called the duck masks. And we wore those on top of our surgical masks. So I thought that was different. I don't know why didn't, they didn't give us an N95 mask. Our ninth patient was brought in through ED, like at the end of our shift. So I was able to transfer the patient from the emergency transport vent to the Draeger. And the RT preceptor was amazing. She allowed me to do it all by myself and she just walked me through it and she told me what to do and it was awesome. And I did an amazing job. So I really, really enjoyed my clinicals this week and my preceptors there was some abbreviations on the report tr basically means trait care ams altered mental status ich intracranial hemorrhage so some of our patients had that on the admin it'll say 
E-T, arrow, T-R, and that's it. So I did have some questions about that, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure arrow means aerosol. So an aerosol delivery, continue oxygen, 3.30, I have, oh, do, 3.30, don't know what that means, 3.25, don't know what that means, 4.2, don't know what that means. Um, <clears throat> but then there's a count on the very last column and it says three, seven, seven point five, seven, 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 three. So I don't know what that is either. So next time I will ask, I have one more week at this facility and then I'll be going to another facility for four weeks. And then my last five weeks, I'll be at another facility in the NICU. So I'm really, really excited about the NICU. And that's actually where I want to work straight out of school. Um, I want to be a new graduate in the NICU and I know that they do hire new graduates there. So I'm really, really excited about that. And I really, really want to learn this semester about everything about neonates and all of the values and everything to look for. And just, I want to learn as much as I can. So I am going to be doing flashcards on all of the values and everything I need to know and all of the machines, all of the vents and how they affect every disease process. And yeah, so that's basically my week five out of 15 weeks. And that's my clinical week for y'all. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give me a great big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified the next time I post. And thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys. Bye.